Hiya folks, I was just recently on a podcast called The Mystical Positivist, and I'll provide a link below to that. They did an interview with me that I think came out pretty well, and while listening to a bit of the interview, I can never listen to a whole interview with me because I just get to, just, uh, it skeeves me out, but I listened to the beginning. And I was talking about the Zen teacher-student relationship as an apprenticeship. And I have touched on this subject in other videos, but I thought I'd do a video specifically about that. And what I said in the podcast is that I think the relationship between a Zen teacher and a Zen student is like an apprenticeship. And the, the best analogy I can come up with is like a potter. You know, if you want to learn pottery, you go be an apprentice to a potter whose work you like and then kind of hang out with that person and watch what they do. You don't necessarily get lessons. If you're lucky, the master potter might show you a few things here and there, but it's not like a course of study kind of thing. And that's the way Zen teaching is too. On that podcast, I said that I see my role as a so-called Zen teacher as a role to be a friend to a person who is also interested in the same stuff as I am, which is finding out what the real truth, the real underlying truth of life is. And I'm inviting people to come along on this ride with me. The only difference between me and them is that I've been on the ride a little bit longer. And I can say, for example, oh yeah, there's a bumpy part up here, you better kind of hold on. Yeah, or, or, or here's the fun part where it dips down and don't forget to look over to the side because you can see the ghost or whatever. I don't know. I'm thinking about spook houses I went to as a kid. But uh, th that's the kind of role I see for myself, not as an instructor who has, who has knowledge that I'm going to impart upon you. Uh, you know, to, to the extent that I have any of that, I've read a lot of Dogen, and so maybe I can speak to that a little bit. But I don't feel like it, if you're looking for somebody with a lot of knowledge, I'm probably not the guy to go to. I, I always feel like everybody out nerds me. Like, I'm a nerd for Dogen, but I know people who are way nerdier for Dogen than I am. I'm a nerd for the Three Stooges, but I know people who are way, way deeper into the Three Stooges, Godzilla, Ultraman, any of these things I'm a nerd for. There's always somebody who can out-nerd me. So if you want somebody who's just going to give you knowledge of the texts and, and such of Buddhism, of Dogen, or, or any of that stuff, you can do better than me, for sure. What I try to do is be a friend to people who are also interested in this stuff, and I'm not going to try to tell you the way to do it. All I can do is tell you this way that I've tried, that I've inherited from a tradition of people who have been interested in this stuff for over 2,500 years and have amongst them developed certain habits or just kind of research and development, as I always say, things that they've done that worked, things that they did that didn't work, traditions that they developed for dealing with the kind of bumpy parts of the ride, traditions they've developed to try to keep you stable during those bumpy parts. You know, I would count uh, chanting and, and some of the ritual stuff among those that are sort of the equivalent of the handrails you can hold on to when things get crazy. That's, uh, that's the way I look at it. And I don't look at it as me imparting holy information to you that I possess. Also on that podcast, I talked about something which I have talked about on this video channel before, so forgive me if this seems repetitive, but I think it bears repeating, which is that I run into a lot of people who don't understand the method that I'm dealing with or trying to impart this stuff or what I'm trying to do. And instead, what they are looking for is a leader. Uh, they are looking for someone to tell them 
what to do and what to believe. And I understand this uh, because that that's what I did when I first encountered Tim McCarthy, especially I was looking for somebody to just tell me what to do and how to live my life. And it was very frustrating for me to be kind of put off all the time in that. But I think he, Tim, was trying to save me in the way I kind of try to save other people a little bit when they do that. Because if you go into a religious movement of any kind looking for a leader, looking for that kind of alpha male or sometimes alpha female who is going to tell you what to do, you can find those people. Uh, they're, uh, they're not that hard to find and they will lead you into bad places because that's the only place a person like that can possibly lead you. Every one of us is struggling to come up with our own way of framing the world to ourselves and understanding it and making sense of it and making it work. The best thing you can do is to develop your own way because you're going to have to. You, the, the, the idea that you can take on somebody else's way is false to begin with because you can't do it. Anybody who tries to do that ends up modifying it to be their own thing anyway because you can never fully get inside someone else's head and understand exactly what they mean by everything they say and exactly their motivations for everything they do. So you can't be a complete imitation of another. So you might as well not even try. But I think there's a value to tradition. And as I already said, it's in the research and development area because the tradition has gone through a lot of people and a lot of things have been done and tried and some of them have worked and been saved because they worked and some of them haven't worked and they've fallen to the wayside because they haven't worked. And that's what I like about the Buddhist tr tradition. I especially like it about the Buddhist tradition because the Buddhist tradition can be very malleable that way. There's no insistence upon the idea that the first people who did the tradition, you know, the Buddha and his original followers, were doing it right and they had it completely down and that what we have to do now is just do what they did. Uh, we don't insist upon that. Uh, there may be certain sects of Buddhism that insist upon a light version of that. I'm aware of that, but especially in the Zen tradition, and really honestly in most traditions of Buddhism, there's no insistence upon that. There is the idea that you can shape it and you can make it different, but as I said in my video about Buddha being a genius, you have to kind of defer to your elders to a degree because, you know, they... they they were working on this probably more than you have. So you kind of accept certain things, but you're always, always going to have to try them out yourself and see how they work for you. So that's Buddhism as an apprenticeship. Hope you enjoyed that little video, that little excursion to my mind. There's links to PayPal and Patreon below me, not on my ghoul sweatshirt, but in the section below this video. That's how I make my living. I just got a check the other day from New World Library for book royalties and it was pretty disappointing, <laughs> I gotta say. So if I had to live on just that, I would not make it at all. Uh, so you guys are the ones who are really helping me do this thing. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate your support. Always talk to you next time.